Hey everyone, this is Carlos Suante back for another Creature Talk. This one is on Raised by Wolves, uh, being that the series is still uh, alive and in its second season. Uh, I will be talking about the work that I did for the uh, Snake Child for season one. And because it applies to season two still, uh, and I have this work that is not really you know, it's not really public outside of uh, anyone who looks at my Instagram page. Um, I thought I'd uh, do a really uh, quick uh, look over uh, some of the work I did and uh, how uh, we were approaching this at the beginning and then where it went. And I'm not going to get into any specifics of the story points because they're still evolving. And, uh, I, you know, spoilers, not good. So I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, I will just reference some of the things that have been revealed so far uh, and uh, just go over the design and what my thoughts were behind the design work uh, you know uh, as it uh, applied in my very uh, limited understanding of the narrative while I was working on this um, it was very confusing I didn't I did not get it it was a really uh, um, yeah, it was very. Uh, it, it was. It seemed very convoluted and confused. The production designer didn't even really know at the time what was really happening. So, uh, as far as the story point goes, the narrative. So, with that, uh, let's move on uh, to this. Uh, these are the boards I did uh, for the birthing of the snake creature from the uh, from the android. Uh, uh, I didn't know much about her other than that uh, she was this uh, fabricated this artificial being uh, that was also like a weapon and that she could fly and she had two different modes um, I would love to have worked on the other mode uh, her warrior mode um, which I thought actually I thought that looked uh, pretty good uh, I was pretty happy with that one so, um, yeah, there was, would have been really nothing for me to do on that. I, I thought they did a good job. Um, and uh, her in her suit, that all looks pretty good. Her design is actually pretty good. And really, I'm just talking about the costume uh, versus when she goes to full warrior mode. Uh, so uh, here I thought the snake would come out head first. And this is my design of the snake. Uh, prior to it becoming the hagfish uh, thing that's in the movie. Um, so uh, the mouth would really open. I didn't want it to get to, you know, 90s mummy uh, with the mouth really, you know, opening too wide and looking ridiculously cartoony. Uh, so uh, just to stretch it out as much as possible without it looking ridiculous, um, and then she would embrace it. She'd have this snake thing that she gave birth to that would suckle on these uh, nipples that she would have on her uh, rib cage, so it wouldn't become too human. Um, here's another birthing idea that I had, that she would be tied down um, onto this um, platform type of thing. And I don't know if she'd be magnetized, but she'd be disabled somehow. And this thing would just push its way out. And this way I'd get more of a vertical kind of uh, pipe directly into her gut, right? So it would come straight out. Um, yeah, these are the things you think about. Anyway, uh, so there it is. And this is my snake again. Uh, this is what I thought it should look like. And I'll get to those as I'll get through the, go through the process now. Um, so uh, they told me what it was and that it would be flying through the air. I didn't understand why because I didn't know that she flew. And I didn't actually get that until I saw the movie. I mean, I, until I saw the series and understood, oh, okay, so she flies. And that's why the snake would fly away from her at the end. When she gives birth, it floats away. It's taking on some of her, um, some of her, uh, you know, 
uh, traits and uh, it could fly. And I, okay, that's interesting. Uh, so I went very much, because uh, this was a Ridley thing, I thought this was going to be an extension of the Prometheus world for some reason, and I went that way to a degree, right? With the color, obviously, not albino like I did for all the stuff for uh, Prometheus and Covenant. But uh, I, I still think that there would this was this is more interesting than the hagfish. As cool as a hagfish is, it's still it's too naturalistic uh, for me because it's something. It's made with its uh, mouth. It's made to eat off the bottom, you know. And I don't. It just doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't translate well, uh, for me, uh, to the creature that we see in the series. Um, so this was one of this is probably my first approach and this is all from the first batch that I turned in uh, these are uh, I thought of the um, the pink bottlenose uh, I guess it's a dolphin the pink dolphin that's a freshwater dolphin uh, very prehistoric looking and then adding cloth as its fins so it would still be flesh but it would be look like cloth so it would add like a second and maybe a tertiary animated kind of attributes, you know, little things floating around, uh, just secondary animation um, in there, you know, to add some sort of uh, color to the movement. Um, and it would feel very dreamlike, I thought. Um, so then I did this one. This is on the first hit I did. Now, this one had a lot of something to it that I liked a lot that I really wanted to pursue. Uh, but uh, here's the other, the last one of that batch, this first hit. Uh, which I still, I mean, so this is getting a little bit too uh, anthropomorphic, probably. Uh, I, I think that this would work, maybe this would work without the eyes. No matter how animalistic it would be, it would still be too anthropomorphic. So maybe I would take these eyes out, use this neat arc right here, the way it kind of arcs up, take that part and put it on this so I'd have that back end to it. Um, I would make a new version out of these two and combine the two. And I think that that would even look better than the, the hagfish. Um, again, I, I still don't know why that was a chili. So I took this uh, more of a biomechanical, and there's a reason why that I can't tell you, uh, which has something to do with the story, and I don't know if they're going to go there, so I'm not even going to talk about it. But just the idea that it's, it feels artificial, but it isn't artificial because she is artificial, you know, and then it's living at the same time. Of course, you're going to get a crossover into the whole biomechanical geeker thing, sure. Uh, but I don't think that this is Giger in that sense, only that it's biomechanical looking, right? Um, and that it has teeth, so you would say that that's maybe Giger-esque, but I don't know, you know. So, uh, so I took this and I decided to kind of explore it a little. Uh, started one layer, trying to play with it. This idea, this thing right here was because it needed some sort of a uh, way of connecting to the mother and suckling off of her. So I gave it this proboscis that would actually plug into her rib cage and uh, it would receive energy from her. Um, that was my idea anyway. And this little black thing is the eye right here. Uh, just played again playing with it and then I added this plasticky kind of clear gelatinous dome around it Again, very Giger, you know. Uh, this is probably a little bit more, uh, I don't know, more artificial even than what the alien uh, was in that sense. That there's obviously, it looks like it's been engineered, right? Um, with this little cutout here, uh, this little airspace. I don't know, I just thought that this would look really weird and cool. Um, and it would, this uh, covering 
would give it a really simple look when the light hits it. It would look super clean like a like a dolphin, you know. Um, you know, it was just super clean uh, shape when the light hits it instead of the it, the light really picking up on all this um, all this surface underneath, which it would do this. All the light would be, you know, you'd get all this noise of all these, you know, all these shapes here, right? But with this one, it would be a clean, diffused light uh, over these clean shapes that cover. So this was one I really liked and I really wish they would have gone with. Uh, they didn't. Um, and I thought that they, actually they had selected this at a certain point. But then uh, apparently Ridley had walked into the room and he said, no, 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 no I want something that looks like an animal. And they told me that this is what he liked. And then now they're telling me something else. And I said, okay. So they sent me the rough. They told me what they wanted. And he really liked the hagfish or lamprey, which is the, those are the two that I pitched him back. Uh, you know, the lamprey is another uh, kind of a possible kind of reference candidate. But the hagfish was the one that won out. Uh, and he, he wanted something more naturalistic. And so I found those two as a reference. Uh, this is essentially just a hagfish. Uh, and these are all the different versions, as you can see. More like a lamprey. Just different mouth configurations. And this is pretty much what they went with. Uh, something like this, I believe. And then that one. It may even be that. Um, but they really didn't make this. I mean, there is too much filigree in the front, uh, in the one on, in the final. And this one divides into three kind of where you have this cutaway right here, right? So you have a simple shape here that essentially encases the eye of this first horn, right? On the top and on the bottom, it kind of continues around the mouth. And then you have the centerpiece, right? So that's a simple shape for you too. Um, yeah, I really would have liked to have worked on uh, helping this one out. But uh, there it is, that's all. And these are my ideas for the uh, creature for Raised by Wolves. There were some other creatures that were in the first season that were the humanoids that I was going to get to touch, but uh, the, the, they were moving so fast, uh, the budget was very limited, and so uh, a lot of things that I couldn't uh, affect uh, they had built uh, the a lot of the bones for the snake on set, and they were pretty happy with those. Um, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I was not excited when I saw all that stuff. Um, I just have to, you know, be honest. It wasn't good. Uh, for a series as interesting as Raised by Wolves, uh, I would imagine that they would have put more into... Uh, the creature work, that's all. It's not good. I don't really care for it. Um, but a really good series. And I can let a lot of that stuff go because I actually like the series. So um, They did do some interesting things in this season one in the opener where the, when the guy touches the, the um, uh, whatever the hell she's called, um, the android, and uh, he gets some of her, her inner... Uh, fluids on him and he just explodes in a transformation um, that's something that I was pushing for uh, the guys in uh, Prometheus um, the people that would uh, actually in Covenant that would get uh, bitten by the uh, black goo filled uh, insects or uh, by the little uh, shimmering little uh, clouds expelled from the fungus that that stuff would enter them and they would have a violent change 
into this puddle of black creature, right? Um, and it would actually imply that that was a very prehistoric, um, unsuccessful way of um, infecting someone because then the host is dead. So now it doesn't work. So it didn't work, right? Um, anyway, see, I'm, I'm going all over the place here. I could do that pretty easily. Anyway, uh, there it is. There's Raised by Wolves. Uh, just going over some of the design work here. Uh, and uh, hope you guys liked it. There it is. And you guys can give me a like. That would be great. Uh, helps me to stay on. Uh, if I see interest in this, then I'll make more. If I don't see the interest in, I'll just stay on my drawing table on the other side here and keep on drawing. But if you guys like these, I'll keep on doing them. I don't. I actually like talking about the work. Um, so let me know. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram under my name or Gallery Anatom. A-N-A-T-O-M. Um, all right. Thank you.